I'm Robert McMullen. I'm a psychiatrist. I went to Georgetown Medical School, which was a wonderful place. And I did my residency at uh, Columbia Presbyterian Hospital in Psychiatry, which uh, is a great research institution. I've been in practice for 36 years and primarily with using psychopharmacology, using medications to treat various psychiatric illnesses, uh, including manic depression, uh, schizophrenia, panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and various other anxiety disorders, and probably what I treat the most of is, is treatment-resistant depression, both in people that are unipolar, that means they only have depressions, and people that are bipolar. And people that are bipolar are of two types. Uh, bipolar one is somebody who's manic depressive and they have such a big high that they are hospitalized for it or should have been in the hospital. But there's a, a lot of other people who have just mild highs, and we call that bipolar too. But in both cases, uh, the depression found in these bipolar patients can be harder to treat than, than uh, unipolar depression because the antidepressants can cause them to swing a little and have more mood swings than ever. But let me get down to the antidepressants. Usually, the first antidepressant we use is an SSRI, uh, like Prozac or Zoloft or Celexa, Citalopram or Lexapro, uh, and also some related medicines like Effexor and Cymbalta that hit two receptors rather than just one. And those are the standard things that we use and uh, you start out on one of those and go up slowly. Frequently, you cannot get a person all the way to normal on that one medication. And many of us think that if we've got some benefit from the medicine, we shouldn't just switch to another medicine. We should maybe stay on that medicine and add something else to it. The most common thing to add is a different antidepressant called Wellbutrin or Bupropion. It works by a completely different mechanism so that uh, uh, using them together, you, you end up using not such a big dose as you would if you just had to use one, so you have less side effects because you're on lower doses of two different medicines. But it's more effective because it's going at the depression from two different directions. And uh, Zoloft and Wellbutrin were used so much together in the past that they were called Welloft by some people as sort of a joke. If the SSRIs and, uh, or Wellbutrin do not work, the most powerful antidepressants are called MAO inhibitors, or MAOIs. And these are antidepressants uh, called Nardil, or Parnay, or MSAM, of which the generic is Selegiline. These antidepressants raise three different transmitters in the brain and that may be why they're more effective. The main problem with them is that you have to be on a special diet where you avoid eating cheese and other aged foods because if you ate a big uh, chunk of cheddar cheese, uh, you may, your blood pressure would go up for two or three hours and it could be dangerous. And you also have to avoid taking any medication that, that uh, works on serotonin. The MEO inhibitors also have the problem that they can cause significant amount of uh, increase in appetite so you can have weight gain. Now, in addition, there's a, 
a medication called the Mictal or Lamotrigine, which was approved for depression, I believe in 2003. I started using it in 1996. And it is a medication that came out for seizure disorders, for epilepsy, in about 1994 and 1995, all around the world. And the neurologist noted immediately that it often brought people out of depression very nicely, even though it might not have helped that person with their seizures. So they told their psychiatric friends who started using it off-label, and, uh, and the company then did research to prove it worked, and it, and it uh, uh, became FDA approved for depression. It works uh, a little better if people are a little bit bipolar, it seems. Uh, but it could work in anybody. And the big advantages of, of uh, Lamotrigine is there's no sexual dysfunction, no sexual side effects, there's no weight gain, and usually there's no sedation. And the dose you use is really way below the dose you use for seizure disorders, which is another reason it has such low side effects. So I've uh, mentioned major categories of uh, antidepressants, SSRIs, Wellbutrin, MAOIs, and Lamictal Lamotrigine. When those, or the combination of those things, have not brought you all the way to normal, there are many other augmentation strategies that we use. And one of them is to add a little thyroid hormone, particularly cytomel, rather than, there's two thyroid hormones, cytomel and synthroid, which are T3 and T4. But it, it is the cytomel, for some reason, that has much more antidepressant effect. Another thing we use is atypical antipsychotics, like low doses of Cyprexa, or Abilify, or Seroquel, and now there's new ones called uh, Rixulti and Vralar, and uh, a couple of others. And those often have an antidepressant effect. And another thing one can add is lithium and low doses, not uh, 1,200 or 1,500 milligrams a day that a manic depressive might take, but just 150 milligrams a day, to which nobody usually has any side effects and you don't have to do any monitoring of the blood. And there's quite a few other augmentation strategies that I could go into, uh, but they're too long to talk about now. If you have any questions, feel free to call me at 212-362-9635, 212-362-9635, or look on our website.